My name is Alexandria Pavlich. I am presenting and conducting research on Treaty 6 territory, which is the homeland of the Métis, and we pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place. I am a second year sociology PhD student based out of the University of Saskatchewan, working with a large interdisciplinary team for a project entitled Better Than Any Medicine, Understanding If and How Therapy Dog Handler Teams Benefit Emergency Department Patients with Mental Health Concerns. I am excited to share not only many photos of dogs with you, but also our preliminary findings on this ongoing study that I am leading in Saskatoon. This study is funded by Mental Health Research Canada and the Saskatchewan Health Research Foundation as a grant where students work with a community organization to do a short project. I partnered with St. John Ambulance Therapy Dog Program, which is made up of volunteers who bring their companion animals into the community for visits. For those who don't know, a therapy dog is a companion animal that passes a test with their handler, where they are encouraged to interact with a variety of people with the goal of providing comfort and support to anyone the dogs interact with. Therapy dogs differ from a service dog who are a highly specialized canine that's trained to help one specific individual with a daily living challenge. I am leading this study through the One Health and Wellness Office, directed by Dr. Colleen Dell and co-supervised by Dr. Holly McKenzie and Dr. James Stempian. And all of our One Health research looks at the ways in which our relationship with animals can help benefit the lives of humans. We have a large patient advisory group of about 30 folks. Some of these are listed as co-authors. It consists of those with lived experience of being a patient, Indigenous elders and advisors, students, hospital staff, and administrators. And this group has been together since 2015, and I am very lucky to benefit from their guidance and insight. For some context, in Canada, a high proportion of emergency department visits are for those seeking assistance for mental health and substance use concerns. While we've been there for the last eight weeks, a lot of people are coming in intoxicated, often they're having panic attacks or they have just made an attempt on their life, and there are often not beds or rooms available for these patients, so they spend a great deal of time waiting. Currently, limited research exists from the ED, from the mental health patient perspective, but the existing literature does speak to how these patients feel incredibly isolated or stigmatized, not only in their day-to-day -day life, but especially when trying to access care. Most ED research to date has been quantitative in nature, but there has been little observations or in-depth interviews from that patient perspective to understand what would improve their experience in the setting which is where we come in as we wanted to provide a unique intervention to hopefully help improve that experience. So there is an enormous amount of literature on the value of integrating animals into mental health care. Our team has a long history of researching the impacts that animal assisted intervention has in various institutions, but we have not directly explored what therapy dogs can do for mental health patients in the ED. Notably, the site that we are collecting data from was the first ED in Canada to welcome therapy dog visits beginning in 2015. And this is our fourth study with the therapy dogs at the specific hospital. Our three previous studies look generally at patient experiences of visiting with therapy dogs, but also the impact that dogs have on people's pain. So our driving research question for this project wanted to explore if therapy dog teams could assist those coming to the emergency for self-identified mental health concerns, and we wanted to make sense of how that process played out. Further, we were interested in the ways, if any, the dog's presence positively affected the overall emergency environment and the impact it had on maybe staff or other individuals in the setting. But really important here is the animal welfare perspective of this work. We approach all of our research with the understanding that dogs are not tools. We recognize dogs as sentient beings and the interactions that these dogs have with participants, it's a give and take relationship, meaning that both the dogs and the humans benefit. None of our findings would exist or have been possible if the dog did not enjoy and wanna be doing these visits as these interactions are all about connection and reciprocity. 
For research design, this project is grounded in institutional ethnography, and the ontological approach of this methodology is really complementary to qualitative health research. It erases attempts at theorizing, categorizing, or conceptualizing people's experiences by staying rooted in material investigation. It aims to investigate the standpoint and the social elements of people's daily activities and practices to inquire about how our actions or even our health status can be coordinated and attained socially based on our interactions with others. And that process is done through the exploration of social organization, which can involve a myriad of data collection techniques. We are also using a One Health framework, which acknowledges the multilateral connections that exist between humans, animals, and the environment. This isn't necessarily a new perspective, but it is one that is not always considered in Western science or biomedicine, though Indigenous folks have always acknowledged it. Working from this One Health perspective, we recognize that the health of humans, animals, and the planet are all intertwined, and if one is not healthy, then the others are not. And because we are employing a patient-oriented perspective, we are starting with the standpoint of the patients as the point of entry, while also looking at the multiple social elements of the ED environment. So I have been employing ethnographic observation by making field notes while I am in the ED, as you see me here with Molly, and I'm also taking part in participant observation of the therapy dog visits with patients and staff. We have seven teams we are working with, and we have a sample goal of 30 patients where we are conducting semi-structured interviews, uh, post-therapy dog visit, which lasts about 15 to 20 minutes to understand if and how the therapy dog helped them. I've spent approximately 50 hours so far doing observations in the ED with the dog's presence, and we will be doing additional data collection before we formalize our findings, such as interviews with the therapy dog handlers themselves. Of note, we have over 100 staff members and 58 patients visited so far, and not all of these are suitable for study participation. Um, we've had approximately 15 people decline visits at, that were offered to them over the past eight weeks due to reasons like allergies, fear of dogs, or an inability to consent. As of May 26, we have visited 28 participants, and I will be finishing up interviews this week. Just some sample characteristics so far, 70% of our patients were coming in solely with mental health concerns, with 30% also struggling with substance use. The average time spent waiting for a consult was 11 and a half hours, and the chief complaint for 45% of our sample was suicidality. 14 participants were male. 11 female and three gender fluid, and the majority were Caucasian, but 40% did identify as Indigenous. Generally, uh, findings, we are observing similar things that exist in the broader therapy dog literature, which speak to how the therapy dog teams are able to provide joy and happiness to people they visit with. Patients are reporting how comforted, grounded, and more calm they are after the visit, and also how it really provides a helpful distraction in a chaotic environment, which is helping them feel more relaxed while waiting. Overall, and this is across everyone in the emergency, it's providing a much needed sense of connection. Many patients are coming in alone and they really just need someone to sit with them and provide non-judgmental support, which the teams are absolutely able to do. In terms of observations, the primary thing I have noted to date is the complete change in each patient we see from the time I get consent to the time we leave after the visit. Often the patients are not willing to make eye contact, they are sometimes shaking or crying and appear to be in severe distress, but by the time we leave, they are looking at us directly, their tremors or crying have stopped, they are smiling and even laughing at times. They just seem so much more at ease than during the initial point of contact. In terms of the staff, they are always very excited and welcoming of the dogs. As you can see, many of them are happy to take a break to take a photo for a few minutes, and they are commenting on how much they needed this ball of joy. It's also improving communication pathways as the therapy dogs are helping patients in distress de-escalate and open up so that the consults are easier and quicker for the staff. And we have also noticed improved rapport among staff members in the environment because the dogs provide a common base for them all to connect. We're also getting feedback from the support people coming in with some of the patients. They are agreeing it's providing a welcome distraction and a few moments of stress reduction so that they can, in turn, be a better support for the person they are with. So again, you know, that connection piece where it's helping improve social interactions within the setting has been really prominent. I wanted to share just a few things I hear from the staff just about every single day that I'm there. 
When I come into the ED, I'm wearing my therapy dog volunteer t-shirt, which is quite distinct from the other uniforms, so I really stand out, and the staff has started associating me and my shirt with the arrival of a dog. So we're now at the point where when they see me, they start looking around to see where the dog is. One paramedic said, this is exactly what I needed. Protective services, this made my shift. Many nurses say, when are you bringing more dogs? A resident, this made today's stress worth it. I feel better now. An administrator indicated that they think every nurse and patient should get their own therapy dog. And we have had several instances where a physician approaches us to say, can you please go see this patient in this room? I think they would really benefit from a visit. So it's become clear that the dogs really provide a positive boost for the staff and the visits are something they are all really looking forward to to break up their shifts. The dogs are considered a part of the care team and they are respected by the care providers for the value that they bring, but especially to the well-being of the patients. And I would like to share one patient story to really illustrate this. We went in to visit with a young man who had, was suicidal and felt unsafe being alone. So he was brought in by police. He had been waiting for a few hours and was having difficulty speaking to the nurse and organizing his thoughts about how they could help him. So we went in with the dog to visit, Molly pictured here, and she got right up on the bed so that the patient could easily cuddle and pet him, pet the dog. He was quiet uh, to begin with, but we casually chatted. Then he started opening up and sharing stories about his own pets. Ultimately, at the end of the visit, he was explaining how it provided an opportunity to connect with something outside of himself and was a helpful distraction from what he was personally experiencing in terms of his hopelessness and suicidal ideation. During the visit, he also began focusing on how important his own pet was as a support in his life and how much he wanted to live and go home to see his dog. A quote from the transcript was, no matter how you feel, this animal you have never met still wants to see you here. And if I were maybe not to be here on the planet today, I never would have had the chance to meet this pup and, you know, maybe a thousand other dogs in the world. After the visit ended, we went to see a few other patients, but the nurse eventually approached us to say that we had saved her almost two hours of work because she was now better able to communicate with the patient who was initially very closed off. They were able to make a plan for his care and he was being discharged within the hour. So key to this was that he told the nurse that the therapy dog visit was better than any medicine they could have given him, which was marked in his medical chart. He explained how hope was instilled for him after seeing this dog that just wanted to provide non-judgmental support and make him smile, an interaction and opportunity to connect that was desperately needed in this environment, which likely wasn't going to happen if he had only seen the staff. We believe that this provides an illustration of how integral the dogs can be as a distraction from the chaos you may be personally experiencing, and it was obviously very affirming to hear from the staff we made their job easier, which speaks again to how complementary therapy dogs can be. Though this study is still ongoing, we've concluded thus far that the therapy dog teams provide an opportunity for individuals to connect and receive additional support in what can be a truly chaotic and isolating environment. Over and over, we are seeing how the dog's presence provide immediate joy, happiness, a welcome distraction, and it helps just improve the overall atmosphere for most everyone in the setting. This connection finding is crucial again, because we know from the addictions and recovery literature that connection is the opposite of addiction, which absolutely applies to mental health recovery more broadly. And further, the dogs effectively provide that happy distraction, which can ease anxiety, which is what we've also found in vaccination clinics where our team brought dogs in to assist with those who are scared of receiving needles and also those in the ED experiencing high levels of pain. So given all of this, we have deemed the dogs as a complementary service to what is already happening in the ED. I've been in a unique position the past eight weeks to be placed in the emergency, and that's what's really been novel about this study, that observational piece. I'm getting to watch the change that is occurring in live time. When the dogs walk in, everything changes for everyone the dogs see, and especially everyone the dogs get to directly interact with. And it's become really clear that the staff who choose to interact with the dogs are benefiting. It's providing some immediate relief from the larger institutional stressors that this particular hospital is facing in terms of bed shortages, staff shortages, and what can just be a really stressful place. 
This study is definitely building upon the existing literature of therapy dogs in other settings and the value these dogs bring through their interactions as they continue to provide love, comfort, support, and nod judgment. In terms of next steps, I will be using what I've learned in this study as a starting point for my forthcoming dissertation research. I've received three years of SHRC CGS funding to conduct a more longitudinal study on the impact that the human-animal bond can have for patients living with chronic pain and suicidality. So that is all we have for now, and my apologies, I'm not there in person to answer questions, but we look forward to presenting our formalized findings, maybe even at next year's Congress. You're able to follow along with the study in lots of places uh, by visiting therapydogs.ca, find us on Facebook at Positive Canine Connections, or you can connect with me or Dr. Dell on our websites, or you can also at me on Twitter, at Pain Sociologist for study updates and more dog photos. So thank you so much to our session chairs for facilitating this proceeding and, of course, uh, references if needed. Thank you.